Local COVID-19 updates from the experts. What to know from UT Southwestern. It's hard to imagine any aspect of our life that's not been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. All of us are learning to do things a little differently than what we did before, even for routine things, things like going to the grocery store, eating out, getting a haircut, going to school. Just as all of us are doing routine things differently, we're doing things differently in healthcare as well. Particularly in the beginning of the pandemic, when we were sheltering in place and the restrictions were being put in across our country, across our city, we had to find ways in healthcare to stay connected with our patients who no longer could visit us in person. So we had been doing something for a long time that most people call telemedicine, or now the more commonly used term is virtual health, which means connecting with our patients via phone or video conferencing. That's been a great way to stay connected with our patients and meet their needs throughout this pandemic, but it's also taught us a lot about ways to stay better connected with our patients when the pandemic is over. So what I'd like to do today is talk with two of our experts in telemedicine, learn a little bit from them about how we've done it at UT Southwestern and where they think the future of virtual health or telemedicine is going. With me today is Alan Kramer, who is, leads our Emerging Strategies group at UT Southwestern. Also joining me today is Dr. Suzanne Cole. Dr. Cole is the medical director at our Richardson Plano location of our Harold C. Simmons Comprehensive Cancer Center at UT Southwestern. So Alan, thank you for joining us. As thank I you. mentioned a, a moment ago, we went from very, a very few number of visits per day at UT Southwestern to now performing more than seven or 8,000 per week at UT Southwestern. Tell us a little bit about what we had to do to stand up that system and what kind of technology was involved to create our new virtual health platform. Sure, thank you for having me. Uh, I think we really benefited from two things. So the, the first was that our patients were willing adopters of the system. In the same way that we had to adjust our operations, many things in their lives were changing at the same time, um, but they were hoping to continue that medical care that they needed. And so having patients who were willing to try it out, nearly everybody who is doing a visit at this point is doing their first visit via telehealth. And so it's important for them to, to be engaged in the process. The, and the second is really around innovation. And so, uh, as an academic medical center, we pride ourselves on innovating in many different ways, and that includes our clinical care. It, and so with our patients being willing to adopt it and our physicians and advanced practice providers adopting it, that allowed us to really scale it very quickly. We use the EPIC platform, our electronic medical record, to, to actually do the visit, just like we do in the office. Tell us a little bit about what a patient needs to be a virtual patient as opposed to a patient in the office. As we were building the platform, we wanted to find a way that our patients could connect with us in something that already felt somewhat familiar to them. And so UT Southwestern has a high adoption rate, uh, really the highest in the country for Epic's use of an app called MyChart. And so about 80% of UT Southwestern patients are active users of MyChart, either on their phones or on their computers. And so as we were building the technology and the processes for how this would work, we embedded it within my chart so that it would be a, a workflow or a process that felt very familiar to patients. With that new that technology, uh, what's different about UT Southwestern's virtual visit to telemedicine visit as compared to things they might have seen on TV or heard about at other medical centers? Sure. So one thing that really differentiates UT Southwestern is we have embedded that entire process from checking in for your visit, doing the visit, and getting your after visit summary all within the MyChart platform. The other thing that really, I think, differentiates us is that we have focused on our ability to deliver specialty care for patients using telemedicine. It, and in doing that, it's allowed us to maintain continuity with our patients and see new patients throughout the COVID pandemic. Whereas other systems may focus on really trying to get primary care patients in to be able to use the platform. We have focused on supporting our entire health system. And so whether you are seen in primary care at UT Southwestern or by our neurosurgery team, you're able to use this same platform in a way that you can engage with your physician or APP or advanced practice provider outside the office. So Alan, I, I agree with you. I'm a specialist. And uh, one thing I was surprised by the telemedicine platform was how much I liked it and, uh, and how personal it felt connecting with patients and, uh, 
and sort of seeing them in a little different way, but it was very easy to use, and I, I found I really enjoyed the visit a lot, more than I thought I would. What are our patients telling us about what they're experiencing with this platform? So the, the feedback has been very positive. Uh, so we do ask patients for their feedback right after the visit so that we're able to get that in the moment and act on it. And what we're hearing from our patients is that they likely would have delayed their care uh, had we not been able to offer this platform to them. Uh, you, we do also have a large number of patients that travel into the Dallas area to see us. And so what we're hearing from our patients who don't live near us is that this is a game changer for them. If they're able to start receiving some of their care virtually, both during the COVID pandemic and after, that really has a positive impact on their life. Uh, and they're really excited about it. The, the last part is that um, our platform gives you the ability to have family members join the visit. And so, especially at a time when, when many areas are decreasing the number of people who can be together, we're actually able to have your family join the visit with you and be a part of your care team all through this virtual platform, even if they're not located in the same city as you are at this time. I think all of us who have children know that our kids are better at new things like this than we are. Are you seeing differences in young versus old, people that are tech savvy, people that aren't in terms of the, the way they're enjoying the visit or using the visit? Yeah, so, so interestingly, if you, if you look at all of the visits that we've completed uh, since the major ramp up, uh, we built a profile for kind of what that typical patient looks like that we're seeing. And what that is, is it's actually a, a married female who's 60 years old. And, and so when you look across all of the patients, again, that are using the platform, our typical patient fits that profile there. And so I think that what that shows is that We've got good adoption across many different age groups. Uh, we, we actually have patients. Uh, we've seen a couple patients who were over 100 years old use the platform, uh, but quite a few in the 90 to 100 range uh, and younger folks as well. So overall, what, what that's telling us is, is that the platform is usable and, and that people are willing to adapt to new things. Uh, and seeing their physician is, is one thing that's so important that they're using the technology. So, Alan, I suspect uh, this experience, I know for physicians and providers, um, we're going to be using telemedicine and virtual health very differently in the future because we're, get, A, getting good at it, and B, we're liking it um, and what it's doing for our patient-doctor relationships. What do you think the future of, of virtual health will look like at UT Southwestern? So, the, this summer, we, we intend on releasing a UT Southwestern patient app that you could use on your mobile device. It, and what that will look like and feel like for our patients is really a one-stop shop so that you can complete a virtual visit. You can message your physician, ask for a refill. You, you can use functionality that we have today all packaged together in, into one easy to use platform. And so we intend on releasing that this summer for our patients to use. The, the other area that we're really gonna move into is called remote patient monitoring. And what that allows us to do is to provide our patients with a device that can monitor important diagnostic information at their home. So that's taking things like blood pressure or pulse oximetry, monitoring your oxygen level, things like that, and transmitting that data through the app to UT Southwestern? Exactly, so we would be able to provide devices to you uh, you would use them uh, at certain intervals or we would discuss that with you. That data would go directly to your physician at UT Southwestern who'd be able to then act on it if needed. And so it allows us to extend care to you outside of the traditional office visit or hospital setting. So Dr. Cole, as a cancer doctor, I suspect that it was very difficult for you and for your patients at the beginning of the pandemic when the shelter in place orders came into effect because they'd been used to coming to see you regularly and then all of a sudden here they are having to stay at home but still needing to be connected with you. What was that like for you and for your patients? So we definitely um, all learned together and I would say probably the first two weeks, 100% of my patients were doing this for the first time with us. And um, we have been amazing at figuring it out. And I think part of that is because we have such a great group 
working together and um, everyone had this very can-do attitude of we're going to figure out a way to make this work for the person so that they can uh, see their physician and and we can connect with each other um, in, a, in a visible way. There's definitely people who have uh, lack of technology or the technology just wasn't working that day. And so if in those situations, uh, we would just quickly convert over to a telephone call and it allowed us to continue providing care and, and making sure that people were getting the care that they needed. So Dr. Koh, you were one of the very first people to use the telemedicine platform, virtual visits. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it looks like? So walk us through what a visit looks like from a patient point of view and from your point of view. So um, it's not too different from having an in-person visit in that you still will interact with um, people who are checking you in. I have a fantastic medical assistant who will reach out to the patient actually before their clinic appointment starts and um, to get them lined up and figure out if there's any technical issues that they're having with their phone or their iPad to try to walk them through connecting to the visit. And then once the patient actually connects to the video, they will then video in to see my nurse or myself. It still continues on like a normal clinic visit where the nurse will make their assessment and make sure that all the medications are correct and that if there's any new issues that have popped up since the last time we saw the person um, to, to just make sure that everybody knows what's happening to them. Uh, and then when the nurse has done their piece of things, uh, then I will connect to the video visit uh, and we will you know, have a conversation just as we do normally in clinic um, and talk about all of the things that we tend to talk about um, to make sure that people feel well and safe to go forward with their chemotherapy or whatever treatment they're there to receive that day. So when this is all over, I think the care that we provide will be different, right? We've learned to use something differently that we weren't using much of before and our patients seem to be liking it and our doctors seem to be liking it. So. What do you think the appointment will look like in the future now that we're using these types of technologies more frequently? I think that there's probably going to be a real mix of in-person visits and telehealth visits, but within the last two days, I've had some really amazing experiences where um, one of my patients had a huge cancer operation. Uh, she lives uh, very far from here, about five hours away. And um, rather than getting on an airplane and flying to Dallas to see me as a follow-up patient uh, after her surgery where she's not fully recovered from that yet, we were able to uh, speak with each other on the video chat. And I was still able to examine her belly and, and see how her scar was healing and, um, and really troubleshoot some of the issues that she was having in the post-operative setting. Uh, and then we were able to make plans for what's next as she fully heals and recovers from that operation. The video visits, the telehealth option is really going to revolutionize the way that we provide care to patients. As we experience the pandemic, I think most of us view a lot of things differently. Um, aspects of our lives that we took for granted that we now don't take for granted or do differently. What do you think your outlook will be on medicine as we exit the pandemic and how will you view medicine differently after we no longer have coronavirus to think about every day? I'm trying to get my mindset that, that I need to continue embracing technology and the way that technology can uh, enhance the care that we're giving. I also think that there will continue to be that in-person touch um, that is necessary and will be uh, part of the, the care that we provide in the long run. Um, but because telehealth is so efficient, uh, you're not having lots of lags in between patients because you're not physically moving people around your clinic. There's more appointments available. Uh, I think it's really going to, to change the way that we practice medicine in the future. So Dr. Cole, as the city loosens up a little bit and the restrictions are lifted, uh, more people are moving, uh, moving about, doing more things, going to stores, going to restaurants. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing to keep yourself safe and your family safe. I know you have young kids at home. My kids have not left the house in about eight or nine weeks, and we're, we're trying to keep them busy. They're playing outside in our yard quite a bit. I personally have been coming to work every day because we uh, provide chemotherapy infusions and there has to be a physician on site for that to go forward. So it's been uh, actually kind of therapeutic for me to come to work because it's been quite normal to continue uh, coming into clinic. 
this weekend I had to go to Home Depot to get some gardening supplies and I wore a mask and um, was really concerned about washing my hands once I had interacted with uh, the outside world. But I would say most, most people are still laying low and sheltering in place and um, we're doing the same. So thank you, Alan and Dr. Cole, for joining us and for all you're doing with this new technology on behalf of our patients. And please stay safe. So one of the reasons that we invested heavily in telemedicine and virtual health at UT Southwestern at the beginning of the pandemic and stood up this platform was that we did not want patients to delay their care or not get care while they were sheltered in place, while they were unable to come to the hospital or to the clinic to see their doctor. So as the city, the state, and the country begin to open up, we want to encourage you not to delay your care. One of our biggest worries throughout the pandemic is that people would have a problem, a medical problem, that they would, and they would delay seeking care or getting the care they need along the way to diagnose and treat it. Um, we're seeing across the country that people are not coming to the hospital when they're having chest pain or symptoms that might be suggestive of a stroke. Uh, we really want to encourage people to stay connected with your medical community. Make sure that they know the problems that you're having so we can address them, either remotely through virtual health or in person as the hospitals and clinics begin to open up. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to you joining us again next week. Stay safe and stay healthy.